located the anomaly. Doesn't appear human. I'm aware, sir, that the suit is humanoid. But what's inside it isn't. Going in for a closer look. First Lieutenant James Chen wasn't a rookie. He knew how these things went. He had refused promotion three times now. He liked the field work. He moved towards the body floating in the water. It resembled a man in a standard issue US diving suit, but the helmet was empty and filled with water. Detritus floated around in the empty helmet, and some sort of fluid was oozing out from the gloves. On the back of the suit, an umbilical cord stretched off into the distance. He grabbed the suit and pulled it back with him. Welcome back. Today I bring you SCP-1264. Remember to subscribe and like. Pressure stabilizing. Water evacuation. 65% complete. As the water disappeared, he heard the hiss of the pressure door open. Took you long enough. Got that bag of bones? Kloss's eyes narrowed. Sounds like someone is ready for another court-martial. Just say the word, Chen. Chen glared back at him. <laughs> Here you go, Doc. One bag of meat as requested. Kloss smiled. Drag it into the lab. Do I really need to be here for this? Look, I know you like to be out there, busting numbers and taking hits, but you need to understand the anatomy of this thing if you're going to capture it alive. Capture it alive? It's a massive ship, bigger than a pair of aircraft carriers. How do you expect me to catch a ship by looking at this bag of slime? The ship's not important. It's what's controlling the ship. That's the real prize. Kloss pulled the helmet off the dive suit. Water rushed out onto the floor. He cut through the soft rubber, revealing what was inside. It was a large, slimy, sea cucumber-like creature. It had a central body and four appendages splitting off to fill the arm and leg slots. This thing was mimicking a human. He pulled the gloves off to find four more finger-like appendages, allowing it to work and grip like a human. In the back of where the neck would have been, the umbilical cord was attached. Kloss gave it a yank and it came off. Where it had attached was a round wound with small, glowing points within it. These tiny strands appear to be a neural network that SCP-1264 used to control these instances. There was some hardened white substance on the fingertips. You see this? This is the stuff holding the ship together. If we can work out what it is and how to destroy it, we can potentially break the ship apart into more manageable pieces. James rolled his eyes. Okay, Doc, but you just said I'm going after one guy? I can infiltrate without being detected. Kloss looked back at him. What in the world makes you think it's a guy? The lights in the room flashed red, and an alert tone came on over the intercom system. Alert. Incoming entity. Range 1.2 miles in closing. Dr. Kloss to the control room. Lieutenant Chen to the assembly room. James smiled and winked at Kloss. See you on the other side, Doc. And took off at a run. He ran through the deep sea mobile base's umbilicus. It connected the different departments together, his heart now pounding and adrenaline flowing. Finally, he had been down here too long looking for this thing. It was time to do a little damage. Jones, LaSalle, Tornkey, you ready for a little swim? The three nodded as they donned their tactical gear. They came from MTF Gamma 6, Deep Feeders, and MTF Tau 11, Can Openers. They were under his command now, and he wasn't going to waste this opportunity at capturing SCP-1264. No visual, no contact. James spoke through his intercom. Proceed north. It seems to have come to a halt over that mountain range. Roger that. They continued forward. Jones and Tornkey in the new one-man attack subs. LaSalle and himself, preferring to go suit only. As they approached the range, they could see lights aimed at the sky. They took position, just below the crest and slowly peeked over. Beneath them, sitting in a shallow crevice, was SCP-1264. They had been advised what to expect, but this was something else. 
The central body of the SCP was the USS Saratoga, an aircraft carrier. Branching off from it on either end was the German Prince Eugen heavy cruiser, and the Nagato, a Japanese dreadnought. Rearward, pointing to the surface, was the USS Lamson, a destroyer, and the USS Apagon, submarine. It was a sight to behold, a true mecha monstrosity of the deep. Jones headed to the left, and Tornkey the right, relying on their submersible speed and agility to keep them out of trouble. This was Samson versus Goliath, but mechanized. The SCP lit up and turned its turrets and artillery at the submersibles. It proceeded to engage them, but despite its size, it was still World War II tech, and those MTF boys were well trained. They moved and dodged expertly. Chen and LaSalle silently swam down and stayed low to avoid being seen by the anomaly. As they swam past, they saw more SCP-1264-1 instances in their navy diving suits, apparently repairing and controlling the ship's various systems. Each of them had a long umbilical stretching back towards that red light. This is how it controlled them. Where those cords went was where the true SCP lied. They reached the entrance to the carrier. Down the hall in the distance, they could see the pulsing red light. It wasn't far now. All along the floor and walls were those umbilical cords. There must have been a hundred of them. The two men slowly walked down the path. From a passage on the right came two of those sea cucumber men. Chen opened fire and they went down quickly. Coming from the other side was another. LaSalle pulled out his knife and severed the umbilical. It immediately crumpled to the ground, seemingly dead. Up ahead was the hatch. They slowly approached, Chen signaling to LaSalle to open it. The umbilicals were all running through the gaps in the door. Whatever it was, was behind the door. As LaSalle pulled the door back, they heard a high-pitched shrill. LaSalle released the door and grabbed his ears in pain. It felt like the sound was coming from inside their own heads. Chen grabbed the door and threw it open. Chen! Chen! Wake up! He heard a loud clap and slowly opened his eyes. Kloss looked down at him with a smile. Thought we almost lost you this time. Too bad. What happened? Tornkey picked you up, just in time it seems. She got an alert that your vitals were low and came back for you. What about LaSalle? Kloss looked away. Jones? He's fine. He's debriefing. So what the hell happened? We're not sure yet. It seems it immobilized you somehow. It took off shortly after. We're still trying to get a fix on it. For now, I need you to rest up. You might have suffered a concussion and we'll need you back at full strength if we get a lock on this thing. As Kloss walked out, Chen convulsed momentarily. He shook his head. What were those images? Just flashbacks of earlier. Means nothing. He rolled onto his side and tried to get some sleep. SCP-1264 is an amalgamation of once derelict warships and various pieces of flotsam and jetsam that have been adhered together by organic secretions. The main body of SCP-1264 is made up of five World War II era ships that were used as target ships as part of the Operation Crossroads atomic bomb tests performed at the Bikini Atoll in 1946. SCP-1264 is maintained by a crew that has been designated SCP-1264-A each fits inside a U.S. Navy standard rubber diving dress and are equipped with a Mark V diving helmet and weighted boots. SCP-1264-A are headless humanoid entities closely related to sea cucumbers. SCP-1264-A are also connected by a flexible arterial cord, roughly 90 meters long, that is in turn connected to SCP-1264's interior. SCP-1264-A displays a deep understanding of SCP-1264's mechanical and electrical systems. SCP-1264-A habitually performs repairs and maintenance with what is available within their designated areas. SCP-1264-A are characteristically slow, obstinate, and exhibit no real intelligence of their own. 
SCP-1264-A also secrete a strong adhesive through their gloves that act as a waterproof sealant, binder, filler, and cement in order to maintain the structural integrity and buoyancy of SCP-1264. All of SCP-1264's steerage and weapon systems are operated by SCP-1264-A. In turn, SCP-1264-A is commanded by a single entity designated SCP-1264-1. SCP-1264-1's appearance is unknown, and the only physical evidence for SCP-1264-1's existence are the arterial cords that connect SCP-1264-A to the ship's interior. These cords are lined with strands of neural tissue that do not originate from SCP-1264-A. This indicates that SCP-1264-A is directly connected to a separate biological entity, or that SCP-1264-1 is actually the collective consciousness of SCP-1264-A. SCP-1264-1 has proven on numerous occasions to be a hostile and skillful tactician of naval warfare. SCP-1264-1 has been reported in some cases to transmit radio signals via ELF radio. I hope for Lieutenant Chen's sake that there are no lasting side effects, though I wouldn't count on it. As always, have a care and remember to subscribe, like, and share, if you would. Until next time, farewell.